Hey everybody, Lonnie here again. We're doing part two of our vent frame uh, search and uh, using the AFSDK. I hope that uh, you looked at part one to learn to see how tokens were being done. And now we're gonna go into looking to see a, a different way of using the search, using uh, a string, string search, which in some ways I feel is maybe a little bit more simple depending on what you're trying to do. But uh, at the same time, um, the token the token method with the list can be uh, can be a little bit more versatile um, depending on, on on what you're trying to do with your oh what happened here some stuff uh, hi Bodie how you doing man are you here to code with me uh, this is Bodie by the way you'll probably see him in more than one video um, I hope things are going well with you and and you're uh, learning all kinds of stuff around data, data visualization, the Pi system. Let's go ahead and jump back to the code and we'll just continue where we were after part one. So look at part one and uh, now, we're, now we're gonna go into part two. And what I wanna do on part two is we're gonna do a string search. So the string search is uh, is, is a little bit more concise is the way is a word I would like to use and let's uh, let's switch over to our um, remote uh, Pi system here and what what I want to do is I want to um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new search here and I'm going to change some some parameters around this search and so we're, we're gonna use this low containment string template and I'm just gonna search for that to see what happens. And you can see we're pulling in a bunch of uh, events that are off of that template. And if you look uh, up here, we have a string. This says template colon uh, low containment string. We're, we can actually use that to, to um, to help generate what we want our search to look like. So let me show you how that works. Let's come back to our code and we'll go ahead and take uh, all of this, uh, oops, take all of this and um, this, is, this is all our token stuff. Let's go ahead and just park that there and let's do this. Um, let's. So the, the first thing we want to do is we want to set up what our query is going to look like. And so this query, we can go ahead and just use that string that we were just, we were just looking at. I'm going to come back to my desktop and I'm, uh, my remote desktop, I'm going to copy that. And uh, we're just going to paste that in here. So the only thing we really need to do is we just, this is going to be, uh, single quotes because we need to put this in double quotes. It's going to be a string. And, and so we're just saying template and we want that to be equal to low containment string. And then we just, we're gonna plug this into um, this uh, AF event frame search like we did before. So we'll go ahead and we'll just say, um, uh, var and we did that token search before we'll do this call string search and that's going to be a new AF event frame search and here we're going to plug in our uh, database once again and then we want to just give it the query string that we just set up and the uh, whoops actually we need to give it our name this is going to be called our uh, template search, and then we plug in the query string, just like so. So a um, little bit, little bit uh, more straightforward or a little bit more concise than what we we're, when we're using tokens at this point. And we just really uh, do the same thing. We're gonna look at our results, and that's going to be equal to our um, string search. Finding our event frames. We want to do the same thing with our index, zero index, saying we want to start at the beginning. 
we don't want to do a full load uh, because we're not interested in all the other associated um, um, values with that event. We just want to pull in the base information, which is going to be the fastest. And we want to go ahead and set up this page size. We'll pick 10 once again and see what happens. Cool, we can see that we brought in 10 events just like we did before with our token search. Now I want to add to this. Let's go ahead and add in our, um, our element search like we did before. Go ahead and come over here to our remote desktop under our event frame search. And I can add criteria here. And if we want to um, look at something uh, that, that, um, that isn't listed here already, we can go ahead and put that in. Actually, what I want to do is up here in the element name, I want to put T001. Zero zero one asterisk, and you can see what it added to up here was uh, it added element name T zero zero one, and we can just take that, copy it, put it right into our search string. I'm just going to separate these. These are space delimited, delimited. And let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Awesome, we can see that we have just T001s now. And, um, and we're pulling in a uh, ton of them, just, just like what we're doing with our just like what we're doing with our tokens. So that is how you do string searches. And just once again, don't forget about the documentation. The documentation uh, will, <coughs> will help you uh, kind of make sense of all the capabilities around this. There's also, um, there's also various resources on Pi Square around event frame searching. But the goal here was just kind of get you started. If you just want to do a quick and dirty, how do I pull in events? Um, what are the different ways that I can pull it in? You can start stacking um, either the token list together or creating a longer and longer string search. Um, they both have their pluses and minuses, I think, depending on what you want to do. Um, I don't really have a preference on either one. I think that uh, the token one, to me, is a little bit uh, more pro um, uh, programmatic, pro pro programmatic than the, uh, the string search. Um, if you have a problem with your string search, uh, some typo in there or something like that, you might not um, necessarily catch that. But, oh, Bodhi's back. And uh, anyway, um, my name's Lonnie. Uh, this has been the um, two-part series on event frames. If you, uh, if you found this enjoyable, um, please press the like button and, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really want to, uh, to do more of these. And uh, if I get a, a, a good following, a good audience, then that'll keep me motivated to do, to do more, more of these types of videos. Um, I have a lot, a pretty long list of things that I would like to um, start um, putting together. And, um, and so I'm looking forward to that. And I really, really appreciate you taking the time to, um, to watch this video. And I hope that uh, some of what I showed you uh, uh, made some sense and will encourage you to start using the um, AF SDK to access your event frames because event frames are super powerful aspect of the Pi system that everyone um, probably could use if they were if they chose to. But um, one of the one of the hurdles is you know getting that data out, and this is um, what I'm uh, one of the ways that you can get data out uh, into other systems using the AF SDK. Uh, thanks again. I will see you next time and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.